Hey guys, how's everybody doing? Uh, this is uh, Kat, aka Stitching Out Loud, uh, here on YouTube, Ravelry, and Instagram. Um, so, uh, this is take two of this video. Uh, I tried to do it yesterday, last night, um, and did not turn out so well. My, um, I rewatched it and, um, it actually cut off because I ran out of um, battery and my phone just cut off. <clears throat> then I, as I rewatched it um, after my phone recharged, it was pretty rough. <laughs> so I'm doing it again and maybe I'll go a little bit smoother. Um, today is Tuesday, uh, April, I'm sorry, September 3rd, um, 2019. So, um, a while back I did a video showing how I knit, um, but it was as if you were watching me, like you're sitting in front of me and watching me, and I, and I do know that, of course, you can't tell what I'm doing, um, so I had a request from a viewer asking to do kind of like an over-the-shoulder view. Um, I don't have a setup for that, so I'm just doing kind of sort of a bird's eye view, I guess. Um, so I hope you'll be able to see this. I'm trying to watch a little bit as I'm going here. Um, yeah, it's going to be a little rough, but I'm just using my TV tray. And um, I bought, I did buy a, um, a tripod, um, a cheap one, so hopefully this will work out and I can show you guys how I knit um, <clears throat> so uh, now I learned um, first of all I tried of course I tried throwing which is the standard way of you know with two different needles or two separate needles this is uh, Uh, God, I forget the name of it. Anyways, they're straights that are just two separate needles. These are connected with a cord. Um, so you can actually knit in the round if you wanted to. Um, so, uh, anyways, I tried it with the two separate straight needles. Did not like these circulars. These are called circulars. Um, did not like the straight needles. Um, they were just too awkward and wonky and um, I felt like I had to keep uh, whenever I wanted to throw um, whenever I wanted to actually knit I felt like I had to rest this needle like on my leg or on my stomach or something to hold it in place while I wrapped and I figured there's got to be a better way to do it um, I looked up a couple of looked up on YouTube different ways um, to knit and of course the other one that came up was continental which is where you hold the yarn in this hand say like I guess like this and then you would they call it picking where you would pick up see I can't even do it <laughs> I I did try it and I actually had it going for a little while um, and then I put it down for a week and I tried to do it again and I could knit, which is like this and then off. Um, but I just couldn't purl for some reason. I just could not get the purling down because when you purl, you have to kind of hook the yarn and pull it down to get the, uh, the loop through. And I just, I couldn't do it. So... I looked up different ways to um, other tried to find other ways to knit, and the only other thing I found was a video um, of a girl showing how she learned how to knit when she was in Peru, and she called it Peruvian knitting. That was the only other. Uh, there's Portuguese knitting, of course, but that's with a pin on your lapel and. Anyways, and that I still want to try. Um, uh, but I've heard other people... I've heard people say that Peruvian is not the right word for it. 
Um, I've heard people call it English style knitting. I, I've heard Irish cottage knitting. Um, uh, there's a couple other names that I can't think of off the top of my head. Um, but it is essentially throwing, um, a lot of people are like, oh, that's just the same thing as throwing that you're just holding the needle different or whatever. It's th anyways, I, we won't get into, uh, the details about that, but anyways, um, so this is how I knit, um, and I hope this can help people out, um, who are trying to find an easier way to knit, um, that's a little bit more convenient for them or, or um, I'm sorry I'm trying to move this so that you guys can maybe get a better look okay um, so here we go now I've already knit uh, because I did the video last night um, oh excuse me I'm sorry um, because I did the video on last, last night I, I have a little bit knit up right here so um, Oh, uh, let's start with the yarn. I'm just using this Cascade Yarns Anthem. Uh, it's a worsted weight yarn. Um, I'm trying to see. It says color number 303. Um, and it says, it says Seattle. Um, on on the uh, the label there from the local yarn store. I don't know. Uh, anyways, it it looks pretty cool. I hope the the green is not too bright. Um, I really like the feel of this. It's very it's uh it's all acrylic. One hundred percent acrylic, and it's um it's soft though. It's not like um. Red Heart, where it feels kind of rough and scratchy. It's very, this is very smooth and soft. So, uh, that's what I'll be using. I am actually, and I'm using, I just, uh, I also bought these from the same local yarn store. You know what? I'll give a shout out to her, uh, Christine over at, um, the local, uh, the local yarn store here. Um, it's actually, I live in Houston. Um, the yarn store is actually in spring. It's called the Social Network. Um, and the owner there, Christine, is totally awesome. She's fantastic. Um, she does classes. Uh, um, she carries a huge array of yarns and brands that you don't normally see in other yarn stores. And I say that because other yarn stores try to sell the big names like Malabrigo, um, Madeline Tosh. Uh, I'm trying to think of all the like higher end kind of yarns, um, which can sometimes be pricey. Um, she does carry Malabrigo and she does carry Madeline Tosh, but um, she carries... Um, Oh geez, I could, off the top of my head, I'm sorry, I can't think of names of yarn lines. Uh, she carries some of the Cascade, um, all the like bunch of different uh, Cascade yarns, um, stuff that is a little bit more affordable if you like doing bigger projects, um, or if you're just you know a little tight on money. Um, she so it's better than the big box stores like Michaels or Hobby Lobby, but it's still um a little bit better but just not like the 100 percent you know merino cashmere or all that other kind of stuff so anyways go check her out if you're in the area the social network in spring texas um or uh, the area is actually called old town spring um and christine is awesome uh she's always very helpful um if you have any questions she's willing to try and help you out um, and like I said, she's always having, uh, uh, doing classes and whatnot. So, uh, she's awesome. So anyways, um, I also bought my needles. Um, I bought a, um, a whole set of, I've heard people call these licky, likey. Um, I've also heard them called lick or like, um, 
Uh, personally, I don't, I don't even know what to call them. I, to me, Licky sounds right, but I don't know. Uh, so anyways, um, I bought the whole set. Um, so I'm using the size eight. Let me see if I could show you. I can't tell if it's zoomed in or not, or if you could see that, but size eight, uh, 5.0 millimeter. And these are really, these are made out of, um, driftwood, dyed driftwood. I, I loved the blue ones. So I got the blue ones, um, and they are smooth. I don't normally go for the wooden ones, um, but these, these are like, they're, they're very smooth and, um, they don't catch on the yarn too much. So I don't have too many problems with that. So, um, okay. First things first. Uh, so I cast on just about 15 stitches, uh, long tail cast on, as you can see, um, now what I do is I hold the needle this way um, and what the, you have the needle here to help support while you're moving your hand. Um, so and what I do is, let me zoom back out because I feel like this is just too close and I'm moving a little bit too much. Okay. So. What I try to do is I wrap my yarn. Now you can wrap it however you want. I just lay it over these two fingers. Your ring finger and the small, your little finger, your pinky. And wrap it. And you want to bring it up. Back up between and over your middle finger. This is going to be, this will be kind of like you're throwing, um, your throwing uh, finger and you want to keep it uh, it's funny because uh, I never realized it until I actually watched myself doing it but I actually have uh, have it resting here all the time um, so that when my fingers crooked like this it's it's always laying right there um, and that's to help it to throw and get over the uh, get over the needle so, let me do this again. Wrap it here. Now, if if there's another way that you feel like you need to wrap it, that's fine. Just wrap it however you need to. Uh, you just don't want to have too much tension um, because it becomes um, an issue with your stitches being too tight and then it won't um, move along on your needles very well and then you have trouble uh, getting your needle under under the loops and whatnot. So you just uh, want to be really careful with that. Um, so I'm wrapping over the middle finger. You, if you feel more comfortable, you could do it over the index. Um, however you want to do it. If you want to wrap it and like this, or if you want to go under and like this and, and use your, your index finger, that's fine too. Uh, I did try it that way. Uh, cause it seemed like maybe it would have been easier but I I couldn't I just couldn't get it I couldn't keep the tension and I'll show you here in a minute uh talking about tension um I couldn't keep the tension with my index finger to um to keep the stitches uh snug <clears throat> so I got got my yarn wrapped holding my uh needle here and you'll see in a minute the reason for holding it like this, holding your needle. Um, so what you want to do is you want to take your right needle, insert it like you would like a knit stitch. And then now I'm just showing once you get going quicker, you probably won't ever use your thumb really. I, I, I'm doing it just so you can see how um, how the, the stitch is going to work. So insert here through the front like you're going to knit and then take your middle finger or I'm taking my middle finger and I'm going to wrap it. I know it's hard to see because of my index finger but I'm wrapping it 
around from back to front and I'm using my index finger to kind of pull it a little bit to keep it on the needle so that it doesn't slip off the end and then I'm gonna pull my right needle back through with the loop on it and then the other one off let's try that again I'm gonna go through the front I'm gonna wrap it from back to front take use this as a tensioner a little bit pull that through and then off <clears throat> It does take a little bit of practice. It, it feels a little awkward. Actually, as I'm going, when I get faster, I, I use this finger to hold the, the loop on the left needle so that I can wrap, pull this down. Not pull it, just keep a little tension on it. Pull it through and off. So I'll show you a few times here. Going slow. I'm just sliding this along. And as you can see, what I'm doing is with my thumb and here I'm holding my needle. I'm not holding it real tight. I'm just holding it just a little, again, a little snug to keep the needle from going all over the place and so that it goes where I want it to go to, so I can direct it where I want it to go. And then I actually let go so that it slides, like uh, it's actually, the needle is sliding a little bit so that I could wrap, I can come forward and wrap, and then off. Through here, I let go, wrap, grab it, grab it here, pull it back through, and then off. And like I say, it does take a little bit of work, um, a little bit of practice to get it going. Now, and the thing to think about too is, as you're working, you're as you're working, if you have more. Uh, more stitches of course it's going to get a little bunched up right here because of your the your the crotch I guess <laughs> the little crook here between your thumb and your index so and and that's I mean that's okay um, let it get bunched up as tight as you need it to get and then once it just gets a little bunched up you could pull it down and actually work it like this. Once this piece actually gets longer and longer, you could just let it drape over. Um, that was one of the questions is how do I how do I knit when you already have like a big piece? Well, just let it drape over um, and use your thumb as kind of, you know, to hold it. So here we go. And as you can see, it's not affecting with the material on top. It's not affecting how I knit. It's all the same. And there you go. So let's try that again. And I'll show you how to purl in a little bit. <clears throat> there we go. We've got my work here. Now I do know a lot of people like to slip the first stitch. I, I don't like slipping the first stitch. If that's what you choose to do, then um, that's up to you. Um, that, and that's completely fine. Um, because I don't slip the first stitch, I don't know if you're supposed to slip it this way or slip it that way. I don't know, but however you do it, that that's fine. Um, so I'm gonna knit my first stitch. the mechanics here and I just tug it just a little bit to tighten it up so that you don't have that big awkward loop on the on the end there so here we go 
insert, release and wrap around, get your tension, pull the loop through and then off. And let me show you how I would, my normal speed, I guess. Um, when I get going, it, it could be pretty, pretty quick. Um, so this I'm just going to do at like a knot in a hurry speed. I say knot in a hurry speed, you know, those times when you're trying to, you're, watching a show or something or you have to hurry up and get to dinner and you're trying to finish that last row or finish that <clears throat> excuse me finish up that uh, the end to the end of the row so you can go and let's go to the movies or something okay so here we go I'm gonna knit this pull it snug a little bit and I'm, I'm gonna knit to the end of the row just so that I could show you how I purl. Oops, sorry. <laughs> that just popped right off. You just wanna work on keeping your tension um, loose, not too loose, and snug, not too snug. Um, because once you get it too tight, it just becomes all kinds of issues. So, there we go. Oh, look at that. That's actually knitting up kind of cool looking, huh? Okay, so. And let me show you how I purl. So we're at the end of the row here, at the beginning. Um, wrap the yarn, and now, <clears throat> as I was showing you, usually you would go through the front here. But because it's pearl, and you could you could see here everything's everything will be the same. You just want to go from the back. So you whip your needle around to the back. You want to insert from the back. Let me see if I can show you. Right here. Here's your loop that's on the on the needle. You want to come from behind and up underneath. Sorry, it's difficult trying to watch through the camera and trying to do this. Uh, I'm sorry, I have to laugh at myself. So we're going to come up through the back. And it's the same exact motion. You wrap it around. Bring your tension and you want to bring it out through the back. And then off. Let's do that again. From the back, you have your yarn in front up through the back, wrap around, hold your tension, and then off. Now I'm bringing, notice that I'm, this is the left hand needle and I'm bringing my right needle through the back but in front of the left needle. Wrap it around, drop it off. And this is the thing that I love about this style of knitting is that you're not having to, um, with Continental, where you have to, with your purl stitches, where you have to do some kind of really weird hook and pull it down. And I, I just couldn't get that. So... There we go. And that's that's what I really liked about that is that it's it's all the same motions you're just coming from behind bringing your needle from up behind instead of in front and that's it and I, I will show you um, ribbing ribbing it makes it ribbing a lot easier for me I think um, personally and let me show you that so one minute or you know, let me show you purling again, just to um, 
just so that you get a better idea or maybe you just need to see it a little bit more. So again, here's the beginning. You want your needle in the back behind the yarn, yarn in front. Always when you're purling, the yarn is in front. Come up from behind the stitch and make sure you're going, you're not catching the loop below and go under here, right? You want to go catch just this stitch or this loop right here that's on the needle. Come up through the back, bring it to the front, from back to front, wrap, pull it back through, and then off. Through the back, wrap, pull, and then off. And you'll notice I'm actually kind of grabbing this and, and kind of using it as tension with my index finger. And I'm not making it really tight. I hope this video is clear. I hope I'm not getting too close and making it all blurry. So there. Let me just finish this off. And I will show you ribbing. And maybe an eye loop. <clears throat> or eyelet. Eye loop. That's for jewelers. <laughs> or inspection people like me. Okay. So that was purling. Now let me show you how I would do ribbing. My arm is getting tired. Okay. So we'll start. We'll do a two by two ribbing, uh, knit two, purl two. So here's the knit two knit stitches. I'm gonna knit the first one. Pull that a little snug. Knit the second one. Then you bring your yarn to the front and then purl the next two stitches. There you go. Bring your yarn to the back to do the two knit stitches. One, two, yarn to the front. And then purl and purl. Yarn to the back, knit, knit, bring it to the front, purl, purl, to the back to do the knit, knit, knit. Bring it to the front and purl, purl. Wait, did I have that right? Knit two. You can see. Knit two here. You can see the two purl bumps. Knit two, purl two, knit two, purl two, knit two, purl two. So I have 16 stitches, not 15. But who's counting, right? So, if you want to continue, turn your work, and then continue your ribbing. Knit one. Have to tighten that up a little bit. Knit two. Purl two. And I'll do this at my normal speed. You can see. yarn fell off my hand. <clears throat> I 
And once you uh, actually get practice in and learn how to, what they call, read your knitting, um, and that's just looking at your stitches and going, okay, these are two pearls, so I know I need to pearl there. And there's 16 stitches. Well, let me straighten it out a little bit. <clears throat> 16 stitches of 2 by 2 ribbing. Now, um, I'm going to pause this for a little bit and I'm going to do a few rows of just um, stockinette stitching, which is uh, knit on the front, purl on the back, so I can show you how to do eyelets. I'll be right back. Okay, guys. Uh, hopefully, this is continuing. Looks like it is. Okay. So, I just um, did two knit rows and two purl rows. Got it back to the beginning here. Um, looks like I screwed up right here. And I did two knit stitches. I think I, th I, think I was thinking right here on the end coming back. Um, we'll just ignore those. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to do a couple of eyelet rows on the front and then how to knit through them on the back. And then that'll be it. Um, I just wanted to give an idea um, to show you guys um, some of the just a couple of the, the standard stitches um, that you will see frequently throughout um, your knitting career hobby or however you want to call it um, just to give you a good idea of how to work those um, because I know um, even though I learned from this girl um, years ago um, I still had questions on okay how do I do that but with you know I had to kind of figure it out myself so sorry about that getting some water So let's get started. Um, I'm just going to throw in the eyelets kind of randomly throughout. I'm not really going to count the stitches or whatever. So, um, I mean, I'm going to count them, but I don't have a specific spot I want to put them in. So just wherever I feel like they're, they should go. So um, let's see. Let's start with the knit. Uh, we're going to knit three stitches. One. Two, three. Let's go four. Okay. <clears throat> now to do an eyelet, you just want to wrap. You want to yarn over. So just wrap it and leave it there. And then the next two, we're going to knit two together. Because when you're, um, when you make an eyelet, you're actually creating a stitch. So you want to decrease immediately. So I'm just going to knit these two together. You can see I'm actually doing like a regular knit stitch. But I'm grabbing both of these two loops, the next two loops. And pulling it through. Here we go. Let's do another four. One, two, three, four. Okay, and yarn over, and then just do the two together. So you want to make sure you go through both of these, both loops, through to the back, yarn over, pull it through, and both both off, and then we'll close this up, and I will show you where your eyelets are at, or where where they will be. As you can see, whoops, sorry about that. So we did one, two, three, four. Here's an eyelet. That's the yarn over right here. Then knit two together. Another one, two, three, four. Another uh, yarn over for the eyelet. And then the knit two right afterwards here. And then one, two, three, four. Now, I'm going to turn. 
And I'm just going to do simple um, pearl all the way back. So again, needle to the back, your right needle to the back. Bring it up and around. And then off. I'm almost to that eyelet or to the yarn over that makes the eyelet and you just purl it like you normally would right here see how and this is actually that's a very big loop so that's because you're creating a hole bring it through wrap and drop it off and just continue Here's the next eyelet. There it is right there. Up through the back. Round. So you purl it as normal. And then let's look at our work. There we go, we just created two eyelets. One here, and then one right here. So I'm gonna <clears throat> do a little knit whip through here to show you. How it looks. And there we go. You guys see that? Two eyelets, one there and one there. So yeah, you would just continue following your pattern, um, however it tells you um, where to put the eyelets, so uh, what to knit, what not to knit, where to purl, where not to purl. What well, doesn't tell you where not to purl, but you know what I mean. <laughs> so yeah. There you go. So we started out with just um, regular knitting down here. Knitting and purling. Here's the ribbing. Then I did a few rows of just uh, stockinette, which is knit forward on the front. And when you're pur uh, on the back, you would purl, purl back. And that gives you this nice, pretty like sweater looking material right so anyways um that's it for today that's all I have um, I hope this tutorial little tutorial tutorial I don't know however you want to call it <laughs> I hope this helps people out um, oh, I once I learned this and I really got the hang of it um, I feel like I can knit faster um, that way than somebody who, but I don't know, I guess, you know, it's just a, a, a matter of how you, you know, how much you actually, um, get your, what do they call that, um, muscle memory working. Um, I feel like somebody who has two straight needles or even used in circulars and they kind of do this. I don't, I don't know, I've seen people actually like wrap. Um, and I have had to, to work it this way a few times, um, especially when, especially when I'm doing toys, um, and it's hard to really get my thumb, uh, working under a double point needle, um, or the, the, the area that I'm working in is kind of tight because of like trying to attach arms and the head and whatnot. Sometimes it's easier to actually, you know, just hold it and, and wrap it like this, like a normal, you know, like 
old style knitter. <laughs> so uh, I find this very awkward though. So um, anyways, so yeah, uh, there's that. Um, if you have any questions, please ask below. Um, I hope this uh, helps out. I believe the person who asked for this video, uh, I believe her name was X Ren X. Um, so I hope this helps you out. Um, and like I said, if you have any questions, please give me a shout out. Thanks a lot, guys. Bye.